Angeles, which is a really good one. I don't quite understand why it's named the Battle of Los Angeles. If somebody knows that in the comments, feel free to, to fill me in. Evil Empire is uh, their second album. And then I don't know if this was recorded after the band broke up, but um, Renegades is a of music and they make it all rage against the machine sounding which is really cool I like when covers can take a song and I think the ghost of Tom Joad is probably the most prominent example from this album I think that's a Bruce Spring Springsteen song and they make it so it sounds like it's one of their songs I like covers that that one to one replicate them, but like if you one to one replicate a song, you might as well not do it do the cover unless you're really trying to pay tribute. But I think half the fun in doing a, a cover of a song, especially as a metal band, is to um, is to make it different. Anyway, let me take a sip of my drink here. So, I guess we'll just go in order. And right off the bat, I think I am going to put their self-titled and their first album in the masterpiece section. I think Killing in the Name is one of the best songs ever. So, um, I mean, that kind of does a lot of the heavy lifting of the album, but this album for their first album sounds so polished, and it is a great introduction to the band, because they give you all angles of themselves. You get a lot of the really funky, rappy kind of songs, um, like Bullet in the Head is one of my favorites, but then you also get the screamy sections um, that Zach De La Roca can pull off. Um, Tom Morello is one of my favorite guitar players of all time, and I think he's just really creative, and I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is I think all aspects of this band, whether it's from production to actual songwriting, shine on this album, and the fact that it's their first album and they came in with probably one of the most played songs of all time. Uh, and a lot of the deeper cuts like uh, Freedom, for example, are really, really good. I mean, Bomb Track uh, with featuring vocals 
from James Maynard Keenan. I don't know if you guys knew that, but, um, or no, uh, Know Your Enemy, sorry, Know Your Enemy has the, has the vocals from James Maynard Keenan on it. But I think most of their great songs are on this album, and I would have no problem listening to this album every day for the rest of my life. So, masterpiece section so next we have the Battle of Los Angeles and I'm going to put this in the great tier and the Battle of Los Angeles is probably the album that I am I don't want to say least familiar with because I know all of all of um the songs on the album. I can't think today, sorry. And I just don't think it's at the level of the first album, but that being said, this album has fire, it has passion. Sleep Now in the Fire is is um, one of my favorite songs, like, ever. I think the little guitar solo that Tom Morello does on the um, on that track is is awesome, and he does it by plugging and unplugging uh, his guitar a bunch of times, which is just another testament to Tom Morello's um, creativity. Sorry, I am um, I'm looking up the track list because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Oh, and we have, I can't believe I forgot this, Jesus. You have songs like Testify, Gorilla Radio, which are two of, um, two of their biggest songs. I think Calm Like a Bomb is kind of an underrated track. It's got a lot going on, but it's like, it, it really amps me up. It's one of my workout songs, Calm Like a Bomb. But, uh, New Millennium Homes and Voices. Voice of the Voice list. Sorry, those are two really good, good, really good tracks that I I enjoy. But I think it's a little bloated. I think there's some songs on here that I could I could skip, like Born as Ghosts, Mike Check, War Within a Breath. They're just not my favorite, um, not my favorite songs in the world. But I think that the songs that do hit like Gorilla Radio. Uh, testify, you know, sleep now in the fire, uh, really do a lot for that album, despite it being bloated, because I, I think the best way to compare it to the first album is that the first album, there's not a song I would skip, but on this album, there are songs I would skip, and that's why it's not in the masterpiece section, but the songs that I wouldn't skip are fantastic. So, this might be a controversial one. Oh, it's all going to be controversial because there's only three real albums. Evil Empire. I'm going to put in the good category. And a lot of it comes down to production. So if I understand the story right, the sound of the album was intentional. I think they wanted it to sound a little bit lower production, and they recorded it in a lower production studio, um, and if I'm recalling correctly, I could be wrong, so if I'm not correct, please correct me in the comments, the band was also going through a hard time at the time of them writing Evil Empire, so that kind of explains why the production is kind of bad, and it sounds worse than the first album, much worse which you'd think it would be the other way around. Um, and um, there's just not too many songs on this album that I would go back and listen to. I mean, Bulls on Parade is is uh, uh, one of their biggest songs and is a really good song. People of the Sun is a great opening track on the album. Uh, Down Rodeo has got some great themes as some of the Artisanic lines of any Rage Against the Machine song. What about 
years ago. I haven't, I haven't seen a brown man since their grandparents bought one. I mean, the, it, 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 lyrics hit hard. But other than that, being the Hell Revolver, Snake Charmer, not a fan. Tire Me is all right. But I, I shouldn't say not a fan. It's just, I think th they hit the sophomore slump and they came back with the Battle of Los Angeles. But this album, just songs aren't as catchy. They aren't as good. There aren't as many songs that carry it like the Battle of Los Angeles. I think the Battle of Los Angeles, Angeles is a little bloated. But the songs that carry that album are great. It's kind of like the, uh, the house in Up with all the balloons carrying the big heavy house. And I feel like this house has less balloons, if that makes sense. Although, like I said, people of the Sun and Bulls on Parade are awesome. And I'm going to put the uh, Renegades album in just in the good because, wow, I do appreciate the skill of taking cover songs and making them their own and it, how it, it sounds really, really good. But I just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put it in the same category as Battle of Los Angeles and uh, their self-titled album because it's they're just covers, you know what I mean? But the covers are good. It's a good listen. All of these albums are good. I would listen to any of these albums at any day. But when comparing them to each other, that's when it can get a little dicey. But I believe that is my list. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree which bands I should do next. Um, I should have another metal ASMR show coming out within the next couple of days. And from there, we'll see what happens. So I hope you guys are enjoying your summer so far. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and always leave a comment. I always read them, and I always respond. Leave a like, subscribe. I'm trying to get to that uh, three-digit subscriber mark. I've never been there before, so that would be really cool if you like the content. And I will see you guys in the next video.